ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready. Welcome again to Raps on TV. Uh, we're here to discuss the latest news in boxing this week. It's been a busy weekend for all of us and uh, a probably enjoyable one for us friends. So I'm here with our panellist, Inam, and we also have a special guest, uh, Gary Logan. So Inam, do you want to say hello? Yeah, hello everyone. Just want to say thank you for joining us again for the barnstorming build-up to the barnstorming fight. Yeah, guys, it's an um, absolute pleasure to be here as well. Talk about all the great fights of the weekend, uh, you know, it's a good time, g really good times in boxing at the moment, and uh, just glad that we've all got a voice to put to it, and uh, you know, yeah. give it give it a new perspective, sort of thing. Like as as what we want to do here on Raps on TV, you know. Exactly. Exactly. No, very very, very kind. And as 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 Inami said, thank you very much for joining us, Gary Logan. Mm, pleasure. Happy to have you part of the team as well. You know, to discuss the best in boxing and just what's been going on uh, on on a consistent basis. Mm. Um. And, you know, yourself, you've had, got, had a good career, you know, over 40, uh, 42 fights um, as a professional boxer. So mm -hmm. we know you're going to give us some great analysis into what fighters go through and in your current role as being a, a, a trainer, mm -hmm. you're going to be a coach. I think you're going to get some great technical analysis of that as well. So um, we're going to start the show, guys. Um, so we all know there was a lot of anticipation to a big fight between two domestic fighters uh, by the name of Dillian White and Derek Chisora. Um, we saw how that went down in the press conference with Tyballs and Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn doing a bit of a dance there. So um, it was a great fight. And then, um, what did you think of the fight? Yeah, I mean, the, <clears throat> the fight justified the build-up, I thought. You know, mm. a, lot, a lot of people, they t tend to say, you know, when you have a massive build-up, like the Floyd may have made Manny Pacquiao fight, you know, they might have a bit of a letdown. But this, this was a phenomenal fight. I mean, I, I thought it would be because I'm thinking... Derek Chisora, you know, if, if he doesn't do well in this fight, he's finished, his career's mm. finished. And he's, you know, training with people like Povetkin, I'm thinking, this guy's serious, you know. And, and what I'm thinking is, like, Dylan White hasn't fought someone, besides Joshua, hasn't fought mm. someone of Chisora's experience. So I thought that would come into it, and yeah. I think it did come into it to make it the mm. fight that he was. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was um, Dillian's first fight other than Joshua. Mm. So you look in all the fights that he's had, he's fought two real fighters, guys that, you know, not come to lay down or anything. These guys have actually come to win. And obviously, um, as we know from all the pre-fight build up, that Derek was motivated for this one. Yeah. Um, and I spoke to Don Charles a few weeks before, and he did say to me, yeah, Gary, I've got a few surprises. And he was. He, he, the number one surprise was how often Derek um, landed the jab yeah. and how often Dillian couldn't find a way around it. Yeah. Um, Problem was that Derek didn't use the jab enough. Yeah. You and know? To, to that point, um, and it's a question for both of you. Do you felt that sh who seemed the more the fighter that was seemed to feel the pain the most? So you know, I look at some of the punches that Chisora mm. was throwing, especially to the body, and mm. then I look at what White threw against him. There were some big punches, but in my opinion, I felt uh, Chisora let off the power, more powerful punches. Mm. What, what was your thoughts on that? Um, I think he let off the more powerful punches, but to be honest. And this might c sound controversial. I don't think either of them are in the elite of heavyweight whackers. Mm. I really don't. I think yeah. they're solid yeah. punchers yeah. at the levels that they've boxed at and been successful at. Mm -hmm. um, when they've actually had to go up a level, they've never, you know, Derek never hurt Vitali. Um, and Dillian stunned Joshua mm -hmm. once. Um, but we never saw it again. Yeah. So. You know, is it a case of Josh getting a quick, getting a shock, or Josh not being able to take a shot? As some people have said, I'm not sure if I believe that. But um, the next few fights will really tell us what we need to know about Dillian. Mm. Are he um, when he when he goes up to that level again, will he hurt these guys? Can he stop these guys? Because um, he hasn't done so so far. I mean. Um, the Lewison fight was more a stoppage of fatigue and Lewison's eye closing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and Lewison was out of shape. Yeah. 
Um, Dave Allen as well. Yeah, you know, Dave Allen as well. Went ten rounds with that Dave Allen, and realistically, you know, you know, I know Dillian. I, I know, I know the great work ethic that he's got. Mm-hmm. You know, but sometimes you got you got to say it for what it is. At, at elite heavyweight level, he's not whacking as hard no, as he needs to. Yeah, you know, but he's brought. He, you know, the other night he brought so many other things to the table. The, the really good short inside shots. Yeah. You know, which I did, I did find that quite impressive. Yeah. But those short inside shots <coughs> didn't stop Derek doing what he wanted to do. No, that's the problem. Yeah, that was really the problem. They did not stop Derek coming on no. and coming on and coming on. Yeah. You know, and in my mind, I had Derek just winning. Mm-hmm. But when they lifted Dillian's hand, I wasn't surprised. It was, it was one of those ones where I think Derek should get it. But if he doesn't, I wouldn't start screaming for the houses. Yeah, it was you know? a close fight. Mm. And, um, how did you score the fight? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> I, I did buy Derek for two rounds as two well. Rounds. Mm. Yeah, and going back to your previous question, I, I thought Derek did land the heavier shots compared to Dillian shots. You know, mm-hmm. I, I thought he rocked Dillian on three occasions. Mm. And right in the last 12th, mi- 12th round, mm. in the you know last few seconds, you know, he really landed a heavy, heavy blow on mm. Dillian. I don't know if you still recall that, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so of the two, I think Derek Chisora probably was landing the heavier shots. Mm. Um, in terms of who won the fight, I mean, we, you know, we, we ran a poll. Um, you know, and our poll said seven, you know, seventy four, seventy five percent of 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 the fans that voted said uh, Derek Chisora won, mm. and that's reflective of a number of polls. You know, I mean, I saw another another two polls. One was the original of eighty percent of the fans thought Chisora yeah. won, and another yeah. one was seventy five percent. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. So, as we know, this is a big big topic, and it's a big show. Um, we're gonna go to the op- we're gonna open up the lines um, as you guys are all calling in. So we've got one caller on the line at the moment. Um, so we're gonna go straight out to. Two three zero two three zero, the line is all yours. Hello. Hi guys, my name is Sonia. Hi, is that Sonia? Yes, yes, that's Sonia. Hi, how are you doing, Sonia? Uh, thanks I'm for calling in. Thanks. thanks for thanks for calling in. Um, what have we got to tell us about the the weekend's action? Um, you know, I I just wanted to have a bit of a comment about um the fighter Joshua Molina. Okay. Um, I'd like to know what is your opinion. Sorry, guys, I'm in the studio, but I'd like to know what is your opinion because do you think it's really fair for the fans when they're, they're paying a pay-per-view or they're buying tickets and you see that type of of fight where, really, like it was a walk in the park for us, I should say. Even, it was a <laughs> uh, and do you, do you really think that what earns doing that type of fight is it, it I mean the undercard was fact that was some good quality you, you have to admit that some fights are very good but if you come to see Joshua fighting and you just end up to see that do you think it's fair for the fans or I mean what's your opinion basically yeah no um and I'm Gary do you guys want to yeah um gosh it's a, it's a tough one because the undercard was very good um and I think they had to make the undercard Mm. very good because we all knew what was going to happen with the <laughs> Joshua Molina fight yeah. you know but it, you know but then I always find myself second guessing myself even because Molina does deserve to be world ranked mm-hmm. he does deserve to be world ranked and I, ideally when they first mooted that Joshua would be fighting on this date in a pay per view we were looking for a higher level opponent but as we've seen as we've said in the heavyweights all the higher level opponents are now in and around world title shots themselves. Yeah. Yeah? So they're, they're not going to fight a Joshua right now. Mm. So you've got the, the division below. Yeah. And that division isn't full of very good fighters. Yeah. Now, Molina's tough. And on, on his day, he can give you a lot of trouble. But coming out with a Joe Fraser-type defense and not actually using that defense to do anything constructive, Ari the old cross-armed thing. Yeah. It's not going to stop a creature like Joshua punching your head in. Precisely. And I mean, yeah. I would go back to what you said there, creature or the machine that yeah. Joshua is once he steps in that ring. Oh. You need to have a good game plan. And mm. I felt, you know, you spoke about the Fraser, mm. his little feints, just trying to powder puff punches to keep mm. him away. I didn't feel they were good enough. Um, mm. I mean, it's on you in response to your question. I think Gary's el- eloquently answered that. So um, definitely thanks for calling in. Um, stay on the line. We're going to be talking more about the other fights. And I'm going to be moving out to another caller. So 081, 081, we're coming out to you. 
Yeah, good evening, guys. How are you guys doing? Uh, not too Thank bad. You, thanks. How, who's, who are we speaking to this evening? Uh, Nicholas. Hey, Nicholas. How are you doing? I'm all right, brother. How are you? Good. We're doing well. So what do you want to talk to us, Nicholas? What do you want to talk to us about? Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd like to talk about the, the Dylan White Shazora fight. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so obviously, um, I mean, I saw the fight. It was a very enjoyable fight. Uh, I wanted to know what you guys actually think. What you guys actually, you guys actually think it was, um, it was marked fairly, and uh, who, who do you guys think won? Great. So I mean, I have it. Yep. Correct. I was going to ask you, what, who, yeah, how did you I, have I, it? I, you know what? At first, I had Chizora winning. Mm -hmm. I watched the replay again on Sunday. I can see how Dylan White. They could have given it to Dylan White, but mm. it's really, really yeah. tight. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, everybody has split decisions. So mm. yeah, you guys marked that. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. So no, okay. For myself, I have g I gave it to Chizora. Um, I agree with what yourself and Gary are saying in terms of it was really close. For me, I just felt Chizora did a bit of the better work. Um, I did yeah. feel what maybe let him down was when he was clearly resting and trying to kind of get some power, maybe get his breath, and then he went back on the exactly. attack. Um, I yeah. just felt the work from White wasn't as clean as I'd liked it to be. So maybe I'm scoring him a bit negatively. Um, mm. I expected White to maybe come out and control, not control, but at least use the jab effectively. I found he had a exactly. bit more wild shots, um, but it was a close fight. Um, I would happily see a rematch, and I wasn't screaming a robbery. I've seen much worse decisions mm. um, go the other way. So for me, it was a close fight, and it was a very entertaining fight. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, and How about you, NM? Or NM? Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, okay, my sentiments exactly. I thought it was a exciting. I thought it was an excitingly brutal fight. <laughs> I thought it was very brutal. Yeah, that's yeah. the word that came <laughs> through to me. Yeah. And it after that fight, I was like, sort of blew my cheeks out and thought, neither of these guys should be allowed near a ring for six months. Yeah, you know, they, you know, they, <laughs> they need to they need to rest up. Yeah. they need to really rest up. You yeah. know, um, the the body is not designed to take those hard blows consistently over a period of time so you know we, we sometimes we always say that you know we've got to save fighters from themselves and I know Dillian Dillian will want to fight next week Yeah, <laughs> Dillian will want to fight next. he'll have already been on the phone to Eddie saying I want you to get me out after Christmas yeah mm -hmm. so you know Eddie's got to say to Dillian now man you, you got to slow this thing down you know you're not losing any momentum you know you're still you know still ranked by the WBC you're not going to you know, you, he's not going to lose, but he will lose if he fights sooner than, say, May or June. Yeah. If he fights sooner than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it's all like the stress on the mind as well, you mm. know, that to go through a battle like that for 12 rounds, you mm. must be quite, yeah. ha have an impact on your mind as well, you know? 100%. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, um, I had one like that with um, Hussein Osman that was voted, um, I think it was 2001 Boxing News Fight of the Year. And um, initially, I felt all right, you know. And I had a quick return with him, which I should never have taken. I was out of shape and everything. But by the time I got myself back in, it took me about a year to get myself back in to mm. the sort of shape yeah. I I knew I could be, mm. you know. And um, so that if you're saying it's a year, mm. that means it's had a detrimental effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's no doubt about it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So. Um, and they're heavyweights. These guys are heavyweights. They're yeah. whacking a lot harder than yeah. yeah. So um, my advice would be to to take some time out and let the body recover. Let the body do its work. Perfect. So, Nicholas, thanks for calling in. Um, keep dialed into the show. Yeah. Um, and we, we'll possibly come back to you guys later as well. Come to you later. Oh, oh, no problem. Cheers. Thanks again. Cheers, so, yeah, no, that's a very interesting point that mm. you brought up there, Gary, in terms of the time it takes to recoup for mm. both fighters. Um, for me, I think sometimes we just as fans we're lusting for blood that we forget about that mm. side of it and we don't respect that side and I think you know emotionally no matter what anybody would have said I think you know it Chisora would have taken a lot out of it and mm. also why because there was perf pressure for him to perform oh, yeah. um, I think and it was such an entertaining fight I want to say maybe I didn't expect it to be so highly entertaining mm. I think you're right I want to see them at it, you know, yeah. as soon as possible. But I also want to respect the fact that they to need accept, to recruit yeah. and come back equipped in the right way. Both fighters would have left something in them of yeah. themselves in that ring. One hundred percent. You know, um, I did. I, I think I said. I said a tweet. I said, 
I haven't seen a, a heavyweight fight like that since Bo Holyfield won. Yeah. And as good as Bo boxed that night, mm. he left a little bit of himself in there mm. and he sort of took his eyes off the prize and he was never that fighter again. Yeah. A heavyweight, you know, so... So, no, I'm going to come to you now because um, one of the callers mentioned the Joshua Molina uh, fight. What was your thoughts on, on that fight? Um, a couple of things. You know, I was going to talk about that pay-per-view thing that people... Uh, that, you know, mm-hmm. Sonja mentioned that question before. I mean, I think that's... It's all relative, really. Mm. You know, some mm-hmm. people, you see, it's a lot of money. You know, some people, it's like, what, 16 pounds to watch mm. seven, eight fights, you know. So, I mean, from, from me, from pay-per-view point of view, I don't think it was it was a big, 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 big issue. Um, the fight or the actual night of boxing? The, the night of boxing itself. Yeah, I you know, would agree. You know, um, in terms of the fight, I think it was pretty much expected. I mean, what, what I was mm. what I was mm. thinking, you know, I was like, you know, there's a lot of comparison between Joshua and Wilder. Yeah. Uh, to some extent, like, who's the top heavyweight? So what I'm thinking is, like, Joshua is definitely going to be thinking about banging this guy out before nine rounds, mm. you know, because mm. Deontay yeah. took him for the particular nine rounds. So, I mean, I thought, Bill, it's going to be within, you know, within the six rounds. Mm. And he pretty much went as, as, as we expected. And, uh, yeah, very disappointing performance for Molina, in mm. all honesty. You know, I mean, I, th- I think, you know, what happens with a lot of these guys, you've got to think about it. It's, it's probably like the you know, the Eubank effect. You know, people mm. are coming in, you know, they're coming to England. They're seeing thousands of fans. Mm. This guy's hero worship, you know. Tickets being sold within two minutes. They're mm. hearing this. They think this guy's this is this guy's a hero. You know, mm. they're coming in. They're coming to a stadium and arena. They're in there and they hear the music coming on. They hear twenty thousand fans shouting. It's overwhelming, yeah, right? It is, uh, and then they see this big two hundred and fifty pound muscle bound yeah, guy that's yeah. been killing everyone. Yeah. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I, I think that I think that plays in people's minds, man. Yeah. I think mean, they just think fuck this. You know what I mean? They just <laughs> think, I think they just give up before they even start. Yeah. Well, I honest. think it's the level of the fight though. So. I respect every single good fighter. Um, yeah. I'm not in one for calling bums to my yeah. face. But I just felt Molina, his one game plan, and he admitted it, was to have that one punch. Yeah. But he was never going to be good enough. Not, it was never going to be good enough. Yeah. And I don't even think he actually made an attempt to, to set it off. You know, yeah. At all times, he was more or less on the back foot, on the back resting foot. on the ropes. Yeah. And when he took that punch, for me, the way his neck <laughs> creaked back, I thought it was finished. Yeah. I'll, yeah. s- I'll give him credit for getting up. I'll give yeah. him credit for that. But outside of that, I was disappointed, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the bigger picture is, and we will talk about it later, they had the vision of Klitschko is next. So yeah. they were going to satisfy the fans with something. Um, but I was a bit disappointed. And I was slightly disappointed with Joshua. I think he's going to go on to be the talent most people say he will be. But I would like to have maybe seen something a little bit better from him in terms of just wiping out Molina. Um, not not even for comparisons with Wilder, because yeah. I don't think you can always you don't know what Molina's mindset is against Wilder to, to Joshua. Yeah. If that makes sense. But to be fair, to mm. be fair to Anthony, I would say it looked like he was working on things. Yeah, it really did look like that. It, sadly, for a world title fight, it looked like a glorified spa. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, you know, let's be uh, honest. If he wanted to, mm. he could have taken him out. Could have taken round. him out early. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, no but doubt. you could clearly see he was working on things. You know, working on his balance working on fainting a lot more he's got mm. a lot more fainting going on he does it all from a very static stance though so mm. unless you you know no disrespect, unless you know the game you don't know what you're looking for yeah but i could see that they have been working on things mm. he's very clever with turning the jab into a hook around the side or mm. turning it into the left uppercut yeah as molina did say in a post-fight interview so there are certain things that you know he's improving on certain things that he wants to work on mm. and um you know? But as you said, if from it being a glorified sparring, mm. I think, you know, I guess t- working on it against Molina, how mm. effective is it going to be knowing that you're now facing Klitschko? Yeah. I mean, is that y- y- is that something you do immediately before a big fight? Because he knew that was coming mm. up. Or is that something you do three, four fights in advance and then it's a technique you work on gradually? Mm. I don't know that's... W- I mean... For the, the Klitschko fight for me is is a, still a very very dangerous fight, and yep. it's a dangerous fight simply because of the level of opponent that Joshua has met mm-hmm. up until this time. Yeah, none of them come anywhere near to Klitschko's level, um, and they've got to rely on they've got to hopefully rely on that the Klitschko we saw against Fury is the Klitschko that Joshua's going to face. Yeah, reluctant to punch, um, sloppy inaccurate basically old yeah basically old you know so that's 
You know, and that's what happens in heavyweight history. Yeah. You see Joe Louis getting smashed by Ezard Charles and Rocky Marciano. Ali. You know, Ali Mr. getting smashed by Larry Holmes. It's, it's just it's, it's just a vicious cycle of boxing. Michael Dokes getting smashed by Evander Holyfield. This yeah. is what happens. No. So is it so is I mean, it that so night is it that night for Joshua where he just closes the door on this man's career? Yeah, and we're gonna know? come to the Klitschko AJ fight, but mm. I mean so on the whole AJ's performance, like I said, that was I think I was probably over critical when I first watched mm. it, second time around. So just for putting it out there, I was watching it via FaceTime, so there were little nuances I couldn't yeah. see. But watching it second time around, I realised I was probably was over critical, but I just wanted to see him just go in. I want to mm. see him just move like an animal, I guess. Um mm. but we're happy with what he's done. Um yeah. and I guess the night overall. Um so there were some good fighters on the, on, on that night. Um Frank some Buglioni. big names. Frank Buglioni. Yeah. Um I mean you touched on that. Let's start there. Um mm. my opinion, um I had him losing um that fight on points mm. up until up until the twelfth round. Um I didn't catch what Don Charles said to him, but whatever he said he definitely revitalized mm. him and you know, he came in and he threw that right to the head and it was over for Burton. I mean, mm. the way he collapsed to the ground, um, it wasn't over dramatic. And I was first time I was like, really, was that a big punch? Mm. But slow motion, you see it again and you think fair play to Buglioni because really he pulled it out of the yeah, bag. And now, you know, that's what I think he was. I don't want to say last chance saloon, but mm. where was he going to go if he lost? Now he's won. He's got a few more options to mm. him. Um, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean, like, um, lead up to the build-up to this fight, Burton was very disrespectful to him as well. I don't mm. know if you want to go out to any of the interviews or mm. anything like that, but he was saying, you know, he's a wasted super middleweight, you know, mm. really, really disrespectful to the guy, you know. Mm. So, like, you know, I wanted Bruce Leone to win. He's, he's yeah. a London guy, you yeah. know. I think he's from North London, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah, we don't, yeah, you know, we want this guy to win, you yeah. know. So I agree with you, Ch- cause you know, as, as, as the fight was going on, I'm thinking he's lost on points, and then yeah. when he done that, I was like, bang, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, he did, yeah, and I think Burton deserved it. Yeah. 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 But you put a tweet out afterwards, Gary, you know, when you put that p- picture up, where they're like busted up, yeah, yeah. Like, you, know, really, boxing, you know, you know, they're after know. the fight that, you know, they can become friends afterwards. And yeah. You know, I one thing I've realised in boxing. When when I was actually boxing, I never said anything about an opponent I never meant. Okay. Never said anything about opponent. I never ever, because it wasn't about. I find with a lot of the, today's fighters, they have to denigrate their opponent mm. to make themselves feel better about themselves. Yeah, so it's a secu- insecurity. It's, a, it's an insecurity thing. Yeah. I think Tony Bellew is yeah. a perfect example of it. Mm. You know, uh, even though he's been, he's overachieved as a fighter. He's mm. done wonderful things, mm. as he said, as a fat kid from Everton. You know, <laughs> yeah, but. He, you can just see every fight is the same thing, mm. having to let his opponent know that he's not scared of him. Mm. When in fact you are. Yeah. You know, you are. Mm. You know, and it's no shame if you are. Yeah. Because getting in front of a whole heap of fans and, and fighting for your honour is a scary is a, is, a, is a scary dichotomy. Yeah. So, you know, I with Jose Burton saying these things about Frankie, he's had to say them to make himself feel mm. better about going in the fight. And he, he knows that he says these things and he looks at Frankie and says it and Frankie's eyes start looking left and right rather mm. than at him yeah. then he knows he's got him but yeah. this Bullioni kid he ain't like that he's, not. he's tougher than yeah. he's he's as tough as nails yeah. um, and that's what won in the fight mm. commitment toughness Don Charles um, is a great corner man mm. um, you know not saying that Joe Gallagher isn't you know but Don Charles, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Don Don Charles get a lot more credit in this game than what he has done because I think he's done wonderful things with Derek. Yeah. I think he's done wonderful things with Derek. He's made Derek overachieve as well. Mm. And that's a that's the sign of a good coach. Yeah. When you get these guys that when they go pro, mm, are they going to make it? Are they not going to mm. make it? They're not really special. And let's face facts, technically Derek ain't special. Yeah. But Don has made him formidable the synergies, at yeah. Yeah. And I, and, I mean, that's a good point. You look in at certain boxers and you think, are they the same without certain trainers? Mm. So one I would say just immediately is Hatton. When he was working with Billy Jackson, mm. he went on and he'd done great things. Billy Graham. Yeah. Billy Graham, sorry, mm. yeah. So he went on and did great things. Worked with uh, Mayweather, mm. senior. He, did, he, he yeah. didn't like the regimes. Yeah. He, obviously, the Pacquiao performance was really was was awful. But mm. overall, it was it was not the right relationship. And mm-hmm. sometimes I think we underestimate how that can affect a fighter's performance you know, and mindset. My first manager was 
Mickey Duff, yeah. and he had a lot of contacts in America. Mm. I was like, oh, you got contacts in America? Mm. I want to go and train with Eddie Futch. I want to go and train with this guy. I want to mm. go and train with... And he looked at me and said, Gary, let me tell you something. I've seen more fighters make mm. good coaches mm. than I've seen coaches make good fighters. Mm. And by that, he meant... He meant that the fact that if I... If I um, if, like, perfect example, and, it's an, and he's an example that I respect a mm. lot in the game... Adam Booth. Mm. Nobody knew about Adam before mm. he took up with David Hay. Yeah. David Hay wins multiple world titles with Adam Booth. Mm. And now Adam Booth is a name in Boston, which I think is deservedly so. Yeah. But without a David Hay making his name, yeah. he ain't the Adam Booth that we all know today. Mm. Freddie Roach as well. Freddie, Freddie Roach, Roach with Manny yeah. Pacquiao. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You know? Virgil Hunter even with mm. Andre Ward. Mm. Yeah. You know? He's not produced a fighter... Before or since Andre Ward, mm. John David know? Jackson, probably John another one. Yeah, yeah John David. You know, so it, it it really is about it's it's a unique thing to find. It's it's very unique when you find a fighter that just works so well with a coach that you can't imagine them not being mm. together. Now I could not imagine Andre Ward ever no. being in the corner of anyone else. There. Yeah, I could not imagine it. Yeah, just it doesn't, wouldn't, it wouldn't feel right. At all. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, well, they're quite suited to each other in terms mm. of mentality and temperament. Yeah, because Andre Street as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, as much as we see him in his really pen, um, polite son of God, he's a rough, yeah, yeah. rough yeah. bastard. Yeah. You well, only have you to see that? what he done to Kessler's face with his yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what yeah. I mean? He's yeah. just uh, he's different gravy. He he takes prize fighting to its limit. Yeah. Prize fighting is about winning. How I win is my business. Yeah. 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 And in terms of prize fighting, there was a great uh, result there on on Saturday night. Um, Cal- Cali Jafai against uh, Luis Concepcion. Yeah. I, mean, I know that might have slipped under the radar mm. for a lot of people, but for me, I was probably one of the standout fights as well from mm. a technical point of view on the night. Um, Concepcion was a great opponent for Cal- Jafai, and yeah. I think he's done the business. I mean, what did you guys think about the fight? And a second question would be, what next for him? Um, I thought he bots, as it goes without saying, he bots really well. Yeah. Bots really well. Um, did the basics really well. You know, he moved really well, um, countered very well, did everything that you need to do to win. It was always going to be tough for Conception, as we said earlier, about coming over here in front of 20,000. It's always going to be a tough night. Um, and uh, Kai's, you know, he's uh, he's put himself in the reckoning now. Um, at Superfly, there's some tough fighters. There is. You got that um, Japanese kid in Inui. You've got um, Inui. You've Inui. got Chocolatito you got there. Chocolatito Even there. Estrada there is yeah. a good challenge. So yeah, so there's a lot of good fighters. So um, it's going to be interesting how they market him. You know, is it just going to be um, this Birmingham kid? Where I mean, it's very interesting. Is is going to be this Birmingham kid where they can do a bill? Kawi a fire mm-hmm. head of a bill yeah. or will he always be defending his world title on the undercard of Joshua mm. Bills or yeah, I, I or, think or the like I think that's pretty what it's going to be I don't yeah. think he's got big enough for them typically like, like lower waist they don't mm. have that kind in of the, massive UK, appeal he's never had the massive no. appeal that he has yeah. in, in other parts and of the world and it's bizarre because historically we produce so um, many good goods. flyweights, bantamweights, mm. and featherweights you know like well, sorry yeah, yeah. One, yeah, one, one, one quite interesting thing right um I was talking to this guy on Twitter, mm. right? The last British Arab world champion was uh, Nassim Ahmed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. so this is Kawi Afai because yeah. he's, he's, he's Yemeni as well. Yeah, mm. just like Nassim Ahmed. You yeah. know? So I mean, that's a marketing angle there as yeah. well. You know, yeah, they do definitely. that. They're, they're new coming. You know, yeah. something like that. You know. Yeah, I mean, the difference is that he hasn't. He's a really good all-round boxer, mm. but he's a master at nothing. Mm. So he's done. He's doing everything well, but there is no one forte that you would say he's dominant at. Yeah. You know, whereas Naz was just. I need the personality as well. Yeah, don't you? exactly. Yeah. Naz had the personality, and God did he back it up with how hard he punched. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, to go over to America and have the wars of the Kevin Kellys, yeah, the yeah. Augie Sanchez's, yeah. 
be knocked down, hurt badly, mm. get back up and yeah. do them. I mean, like, properly yeah, yeah. batter them. We felt like three or four knockouts. In the oh, round. it's it was just crazy amazing. Time. It's just yeah. crazy times. <laughs> yeah, crazy yeah. times. I remember seeing this interview once on, on BBC, on, on Sky Sport. We came mm. British, British greats or whatever, and he was being interviewed. And he t- talks about that story where, you know, he has a f- he had a fight and then Kevin Kelly was right next to him on the interview. Yeah. And the guy's over like, smoke your boots. Yeah, Kevin yeah. Kelly. And he said, uh, you know, this is like once that guy punched me for the first time when I went down. Yeah, I knew exactly what he meant by my smoke. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So guy. just and, and moving on to another fight. I mean, I don't know if you saw the knockout from Scott Quigg. Um, were you impressed with his performance on the night and how he 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 got that put that guy to carry Tony to sleep? Yeah, I mean, I look at this guy's record leading into the fight. He's, he's never been knocked out. Mm. Uh, never been knocked out. And uh, this was obviously Scott Quigg's. Um, First fight moving up to yeah. uh, featherweight, yeah. yeah, and uh, I mean, d- just sort of dive into slightly. I mean, I've, I've always thought that uh, Quig has had this obsession with Frampton after losing to him. It's, mm. it's almost like a constant obsession. So yeah. you know, he's mov- moving up, a, moving up a division. Uh, so I think there's a lot of pressure on him to have to perform well mm. if he's ever going to reach those levels again mm. to go and fight people like Frampton, Cruz, etc. Blah blah mm. blah. Um, so I think it was boxing all right. You know, the guy was quite tough as mm. well, you know. And then that out of nowhere came that knockout punch, mm. you know. Because like as Foch was saying, you know, this guy could obviously take Quig's punches. And what he will take is something that the guy doesn't see coming. Mm. And it was, it, was a, it was a brilliant punch, you know. Yeah, he just took punch. the guy out. Mm. Yeah, it's a statement. It's yeah. a really good statement. Um, it's, and that's one thing that Scott does very well is punch pick. He's a really good punch picker. Um, I think what has been his undoing at elite level, now let's say elite level up until Caetano was Frampton and he obviously felt intimidated by the speed and the and, and Frampton's ability to make him miss, which has made it which is what made him reluctant to punch. Um and also if you watch when he blocks up, he doesn't actually block Ari moving his shoulders, Ari looking to slip in counter. He just blocks up and counters, which I think might go back to his kickboxing days. Mm-hmm. I find that kickboxers in my class, yeah. if you tell them to Ari slip yeah. with their guard up, they find it very hard to do. The most They're really are. good at just blocking straight up, mm. you know? Yeah. And I think that's what Scott's taken into the pros. And to this point, it's worked really well with him. Mm. But as I said, you know, when he fights the elite fighters, then we're going to see if that sort of defence does work for him because... The good fighters turn their defense into defense. offense almost immediately. Mm. Do, you you think, do you think he'll ever beat Frampton again? <sighs> I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no for now. And, and um, why is that? Because like, he, can, he can't adapt well enough. Uh, I, I just don't think. I think that confidence breeds confidence, and um, Frampton bots really well against Santa mm. Cruz. You know, in New York, um, and I think he's going to box really well against him in Vegas. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, just to come to that, I think that is mm. the key point. The Santa Cruz performance mm. going into that fight, I had Frampton probably losing, thinking mm. he just wouldn't be able to do enough. Yeah. But I think he's going to go leaps and bounds yeah. now after that in terms of his confidence, mm. and I think he knows mentally he's got one over on yeah. Quick, and that yeah. that fight was much more of a grudge match for Quig mm. in terms of, you know, if you remember the whole changing room, yeah. who's coming out first. Yeah. He was really sensitive and emotional and I think Frampton had him and, mm. you know, technically he questioned him to so so much that I think it changed Quig's game plan as well. So, yeah, I, I can't see Frampton mm. beating him. So, just to move on, we've got a caller on the line. Um, mm. So, six double nine, six double nine, the floor is all yours. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Hey, it. Who's speaking? Who are we speaking with? It's Honey from East London. Hey, how you doing, Honey? Have you got a call or a statement to make to us tonight? I just um, I, I I've logged I've locked in pretty late, so unfortunately I missed the start, stuck in a bit of traffic. But um, I wanted to see what you guys thought um about the weekend's fight, specifically the the way they've um, you know they they've set up this AJ and Klitschko fight. It's kind of pure. There's no animosity between them. Mm. I mean, they're not hyping it like they would a normal blockbuster fight. And what do you think of the direction they're going in with promoting this fight? But thank you very much. Um, I think sometimes you don't need to bullshit people. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes you don't need the ah oh, the animosity. I hate you and you hate me. 
this fight sells itself, you know. Klitschko is our generation's best ever heavyweight. Yep. Yeah. Um, Joshua is the young and up and coming kid. And history, history is, I think I said this earlier, history proves to us often enough the heavyweight division is the perfect history maker for it. The fact that heavyweights that hang around a bit too long always get no, always end up getting knocked out by the young cubs. Yeah. You know, and it happened with Joe Louis, with Rocky Marciano, happened with Ali, mm-hmm. um, with Larry Holmes, and it you happened could argue with, Larry Holmes, with Mike Tyson. Tyson. Exactly. You know, yeah. and I, 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 you know, I think this is probably going to happen in this fight I'm not sure if he stops Klitschko I think mm. Klitschko is going to do enough clever things see here's another yes. thing as well um, the, you know getting back to your question the fight sells itself mate we don't need these guys to hate each other because everybody in boxing knows that they're both a bit too classy for that yeah so the fight sells itself um, but during the fight I think Klitschko is going to show a lot of... I think Joshua's going to learn a lot. In it. He's going to learn the most he's ever learned mm. and he's going to come out on the end of a 12-round decision. Yeah. And it might not be too crowd-pleasing because Klitschko's really good at negating what you do well. Exactly. You know, if that means him grabbing hold of you and leaning on you and clinching, you know, and, I, you know, he's, and at the same point, he's going to give Joshua a lot of what he's never faced before. He's going to have... He's going to give Joshua something to really think about. If yeah. you ask me, Brazil, Molina, Martin... Yeah. Um, Josh wouldn't have anything no, to think about it. This Maybe a would. punch's chance. Yeah. Outside of that, you're right. And this and it's funny, you know, because we saw the announcement and I just said to myself, and I wanted to discuss this with you guys in terms mm. of, you know, just a bit of moving on to the topic and a little bit of a build up for that fight. If we talk about these attributes, strength, experience, chin, temperament, ring IQ. Mm. Who I'm gonna go I'll say that again. Who who's who would you say wins or is, is, is in a better position? So on strength, who would you favour, AJ or Klitschko? AJ. Yeah, I'd go for AJ as well. Yeah. Experience. Klitschko. Klitschko, yeah. Chin. Oh, now, yeah, this is a tough one. We've known Klitschko can go over. Yep. And Lamont Brewster showed Precisely. us that. David rattled him a couple of times, David Hay. Um, I think one of And of course, Joshua got wobbled by... White. Did him white. Big. But he yeah. didn't go down, though. Didn't go down. Yeah. So that's very important. Um, so but his chin, that's a, that's a, that's a, I mean, if Klitsch, you got to remember, Klitschko and his brother got the high, two of the highest knockout heavyweight percentages yep. in history. Mm. A lot of that is due to their duration of fights. If you look at it statistically, yep. David Hay is up there as well. Mm. If you look at it, if you please it statistically. Does I please So, and then so, to um, temperament. So, okay, Chin, I'm going to say personally Klitschko. Yeah. So, temperament, wow. You, you've you got... I think it's pretty much... Even. I think it's pretty, pretty much even yeah. because Joshua doesn't get ruffled. No. He doesn't get ruffled. He, you know, I remember when he he said to Dillian on the, on the, when they were on the, at the weigh-in and he said to him, they were staring off each other, he goes, tomorrow you're going to learn about levels. Mm. And he said it in such a calm... Yeah demonic manner mm. I just thought boy <laughs> I think there's more to this humble age yeah, 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 yeah. You know he's I mean? straight yeah. he's yeah. thank you we know I mean I, I know that he's so street. then temperament we say it's level <coughs> but ring IQ oh you got to go you got to go with, you go with Klitschko, Klitschko right go with Klitschko. Yeah. Now, this is a big big test this Massive. is what I mean so those are just a couple of attributes and then, you mm. know leading up to it we'll go into more but mm. out of that I think Klitschko has come out on top and it just makes it just makes me think Matchroom are really trying to maybe be fan pleasing and say, why are they throwing AJ to Klitschko? Mm. Now, like you said, the age, yeah. passing of the torch, there's definitely sort of intangibles and that go inactivity, against inactivity the activity. Has is got the a lot to do big thing as well. As well. Thinking, right, let's catch him while he's being inactive. Yeah, but if you were looking at titles, which is what they want to collect, mm. would Klitschko be at the top of your list knowing that you've got Ruiz, I'm sorry, you've got um, Parker that's just taken one, yeah. you've got Stiverne and Povetkin that are about to fight for one? Yeah. You know, you've got obviously Wilder. That's a big fish as well. But would I you? Think that, I think those fights would be a bit harder to make now because mm. none of them men are going to be running to fight Joshua. You know, that's my. Let's remember that. Especially yeah. Parker <laughs> as well. Now he's got his. None of these guys. Yeah, they're they're not not Parker's Parker's not. Parker needs to bring the money to yeah. New Zealand. So I yeah. think he's definitely going they're to sit not on those really belts. Fight AJ, yeah. So, you know, Klitsch goes stepped up. But it does it. But I guess my point is, even though we know they're not running, and this is what I mean, we have to commend. They get a lot of stick at times, but we have to commend them because mm. 
this wasn't necessary. They didn't need to take this fight. You know, they could have gone with a price. They yeah. could have maybe even tried to sell it a hay or a, maybe even a Chisor or a white rematch, even though white mm. didn't look so great. But to to put this fight together, I, I have to take my hat off to Matchroom and say, you know what? They 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 put two guys together, and to me that could. Will you say fight of the year? I think it's going to be the most anticipated mm. that we've seen so far. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, Eight yeah. Wembley Stadium. Yeah, I'll, I'll be a bit quick. I, I think, like, Matchroom and Eddie and Joshua are under a lot of pressure to get a good fight for AJ now. Mm. I think people are on the verge of getting fed up now. But as I said, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> as I said, you know, the heavyweight division is full of all the guys that are going to be fighting for the titles who are good. Most of them are elite, and I include Povetkin in that. I include Stavern in that. Then afterwards, the drop-off yeah. is huge. Mm. Drop-off is huge. So when you're defending against anybody other than that, it's probably nailed on that you are going to successfully defend your world title. Mm. You know? So it's not necessarily Matchroom's fault. I mean, this guy went nine... Molina went nine rounds with Deontay Wilder. Yeah. I've stood up next to Deontay. I watched him spar with David Hay. Mm. He whacks. Mm. He whacks. You know? He's lethal. He's... And a lot of people don't want to admit it, but he's getting better. You give him you give him time. He's getting... He's actually getting better. Mark Breland's not a bad coach at all. You know, Mark Breland won everything there was to win as an amateur, was a world professional champion, and he has refined him somewhat. Who becomes the top heavyweight in the next five years? We're going to say, yeah, we're going to say biased, aren't we? We're going to say yeah. biased. I, uh, I, I think it's too, I still think it's not early to call, but I think those two, when they collide, it has to be the winner. Jarrell Big Baby Miller. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the one. laughs> I'll tell you what, I've watched him and you'd never believe he's 19 and a half stone. Mm. Mate. He is a unit. Mm. He's a unit. 300 pounds, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 His last yeah. part was 270. Yeah. So he's cutting down the weight, but he's got ability. Um, he's got a mouth on him. Um, I like him. His punch kicking is very good. Obviously, we've not seen him in there with anyone yet. So, but he's highly world ranked, and he'll, you know, he'll start. He'll be the one that starts. He'll start screaming about is fighting that, all of them. Is that, is that who you're going for? Um, I would say from the next the next generation the next gen heavyweight yeah I would say he's probably okay. up there I mean, so we're we talking really next generation or we're we talking somebody that is no, now well, well yeah, if that's you're saying what, now that's if you're saying now I don't think David Hay will be around in five years no so then it's got to be AJ yeah but it all depends anything can happen that exactly. night when he fights Klitschko I mean so that fight who wins and how as I've said, I think AJ needs to let Klitschko feel his power early. After Klitschko does feel it early, he's just going to keep negating him and not want to get hit again mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And um, I think AJ will get a very ugly, scrappy 12-round decision. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was thinking, like, um, Klitschko knocked out Pulev in mm. hard fashion, yeah? Yeah. He was, you know, he completely destroyed Pulev. Yeah. Quite, quite comfortable. And he's a good fighter. Yeah, he's a yeah, he's good fighter. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Right. Then, you know, he goes to fight Brian Jennings, right? Yeah. Who, who got knocked out by Ortiz. Yeah. Right? And he went 12 rounds with him. Yeah. Then he fought Tyson Fury. Yeah. 12 rounds. And that was a horrible fight, really. Yeah, really yeah. was. 18 months out. He was going to be 41 years old. Yeah. I can see AJ knocking him out, to be honest. Mm. The combination of, like, does he? I mean, you could probably ask this, Gary. Like, if someone hits that kind of age level, what happens to their power? Does it come down or? No, the power level never goes down. Um, it just doesn't hang around for too long. Yeah. What about mm. reaction yeah. time and stuff like that? Um, well, the thing is, you ever seen it? Yeah. Have you ever ever seen an unfit-looking Klitschko? That's my point. Mm. This guy's this guy's rare breed, mate. Mm. He lives this life. And Joshua said that. This is why he based his training camps on what he's seen Klitschko do, how he prepares, how he lives. So with that in with that in, in um in mind, um it's gonna it's gonna be a difficult fight because he'll have long you know, there's no doubt he's slipping. This fight will tell us how far he's slipped. Mm. Has he slipped enough to just be a young pup? who's not been used to getting hit around the chops mm. often and regularly. And that's what he needs to do. If he's going to win this fight, mm. 
needs to hit Joshua around the chops regularly and negate him when he wants to start punching. You know? And we've never seen Joshua, with the exception of Dillian White, we've never seen him on the back foot even, getting pushed back. Yeah, it's tough. And um, Klitschko was very clever at that with David Hay. He came out, took that centre of the ring, and he just marched David into the corner all the time. And before you knew it, it was round 12 and yeah, the fight was done. Couldn't adjust. Yeah, I think that was weird because he's quite tall. I mean, yeah. Hay is like six foot three. Yeah, but would you not. Are, uh, I don't want to say more experienced, but I think Hay, in terms of his speed and his activity, was I felt he could have been as as big a threat as Joshua. Mm. I think Joshua's power is going to be telling, but mm. you know, for me, it's the mindset. Mm. And when I say that, the ring IQ. Klitschko has gone through a lot of wars. You know, he knows how to negate various people's powers. So my thing is, if he can try and ward Joshua off, have him thinking a bit too much early in the round, mm. and he's not letting off combinations or he's straight right early. Anything could happen. Um, I and also, he's bigger than Joshua as well. He's and he's big. You well, know? that was that was what was interesting Joshua's when they have to punch up. This is you know. So these things, you know, mm. they you, you can't. I agree with you on one hand. He could knock him out. Mm. Um, but I could quite easily see in Klitschko saying, "No, I'm I'm coming in." Here it is in and, a nutshell. And it. Joshua has never boxed anyone as good and as big yeah. as Klitschko. Mm. Mm. Klitschko's met all shapes and sizes. Joshua in his 20 of fight, you know, yeah. 19 now, Yes, has never met anybody as good and as big as Klitschko. So we've just got to know what we'll see is what Klitschko actually gets in the ring. Mm. If he's an aged one that's just alarmingly aged over the last year, then uh, Joshua stops him. I mean, and time as well. So mm. in terms of it's been called for April, Klitschko's had a couple of injuries that have obviously prevented him fighting yeah. more frequently apart from the Fury thing. Even that was pushed back because of an injury. Mm. If there are injuries leading up to this one, I think the longer it goes on, I do think that hurts Klitschko's chances yeah. a little bit as well because then he's just act inactive for yeah. a longer amount of time. How did we do with the weight loss? You know, this is being done, what, 24, I don't know, how does it, like 18 months or 20 months mm. out? I mean, how does he deal with that, you know, just to get, you know, get rid of the ring rust and make sure he's sharp on the night? What does he do, Gary? All you can do is um, basically spar. That's all you can do is spar. I mean, I'm not talking about sparring every day. They wouldn't do it every day. Um, they do it every other day or every two or three days. And a lot of that and a lot of mental discipline. Just will yourself through this thing. Mm. You know, just keep telling yourself, no matter what he's doing, I've got enough. Right, so I've tailored my training so that my body can adapt to it that my body can survive this training camp and not go into injury state you know uh, I think they'll be very clever about it um, but it will be just a mental thing mm. it really will be so say AJ wins where, which, where does he go after that who does he fight next <sighs> I mean definitely I'd say he looks well, he's unified yeah he's he was talking about I saw an interview with him with Michelle Joe Phelps and uh, and the thing is what I love about AJ that, you know don't get me wrong I'm always going to be a hey boy. Yeah, mm. I've known David since he was 15. I've, I've just got that loyalty. And don't get me wrong, it's a tough fight for David as much as it is for AJ. But what I love about AJ is that I've got no doubt in my mind. Mm. He's a bit street and mm. he wants to take every man down. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that about him, but he's mm. tailored it in a way that, you know, he's become marketable with it. He's mm. not gone too street. But he wants to fight everyone. Yeah. I don't think he really wants to avoid anyone. It's just not in him. It's an it would be an affront to his character mm. to say that he's dodging anyone. Mm. You know? Do you believe he still lives in a council flat? Um, is that what he said? That's what people were saying. He was on that. Um, he was on uh, one of those uh, programs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he still lives above his mum. Wow. I don't believe that. Well, if he's heard him, or how many minutes? <laughs> You, 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 I mean, you'll never know, but I think he's definitely more wise and he's not a lavish spender. Yeah, well, if he's being smart, he he's should go to the Len if He should have come from the Lennox. I mean, Lennox Lewis, I know, was notoriously tight. Mm. But has Lennox got his money now? Exactly. Yes. So Has he invested I, well as well? Yes. yes. Exactly. So I'm hoping Joshua will do the same. Yeah, I and think he's he living above his mum. He's very, very clever guy. Yeah. Man, if That's he's living above right. his mum and he's saving his money, God bless him. Yeah. yeah. So just so also the on the weekend we had a uh, we had the Charlo Williams oh. we had the Crawford Molina and here we had the <laughs> Abnamares versus uh, Quayla. Um three entertaining fights uh, three stoppages which one was the pick for you guys and just give me your thoughts on on, on those fights or one of them you know what I have to bring my hand up 
I haven't watched the Quail Effect. Oh, okay. So I've been so ill the last couple of days. <laughs> I've got no you time. haven't passed. But um, I made sure I did watch the Charlo fight. Yeah. And if there's a better knockout of the year or a better knockdown punch of the year, because mm. if it had been a knockout shot, yeah, then that would have been it. Yeah. But um, what a knockdown, you mm. know. And it was in a tough fight against a really good opponent. That Julian Williams can fight. Mm. Um, throws really clever punches. He was having a lot of success with his right handers, more so than Charlo up until that ended. Mm. And the way that he turned his shoulder, just rode that shot. But as I always say to people, what, when you're doing pads, when you do pad work, you never leave your head in the middle after you punch. Mm. You know, this is something that coaches should always make sure that their opponents are. It's not good enough to say, one there, he throws a right hand. And then he doesn't move his head. Your bid is as a coach should be, he hits you with that right hand. If that's the only right hand he's throwing, mm. you've got to throw something back so yeah. he reacts mm -hmm. to moving their head. Yeah. yeah? And um, Williams seemed to be, he's thrown the right hand just out of distance, yeah. overreach. Charlo's, but Charlo's seen it coming and done him. But he tried it in the fourth round and was just unsuccessful with it, Charlo. If you watch the fight again. He mm. tries the same shot in the fourth round and was just unsuccessful with it. In the fifth round, he made it work. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I would have to go with Charlo Williams fight as well. That's a big fight. Mm. You know I mean? That's a big fight, man. Yeah. You know, but m most people don't probably know that much about it, you know, this side of the pond because mm. of like the AJ and the mm. Chisora fight. But that's a big fight in 154 pound divi division. Yeah. That's mm. a stacked division, man. Yeah. yeah, massively stacked. Lara, you got Canelo still in there. There's the other Charlo brother, mm. you know. Yeah, and uh, I mean, like you say, there's no shame for Williams. He came into this fight undefeated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for a lot of the pugilists, this was a fight that we were looking forward yeah. to as well, yeah. and it delivered. And it more than lived up to it. It did. It more than lived up to it. It, it was. Um, it was always like as Reg Gutteridge used to say, "It's catch as catch can." Yeah. Boxing, you know, one would nail the other, the other one would nail it. Yeah. Williams was very successful with his jab, arguably more successful with his jab, yeah. ironically, over after being put down, down on the jab. Exactly. But that was a ramrod jab. That yeah, one. but it goes to yeah. show again the ring IQ. You know, some yeah. guys, they adjust just like Ward against Kovalev yeah. did. You take a big hit and then you kind of adjust. Unfortunately, yeah. he didn't go on to win. Mm. Um, but uh, Brock Crawford, uh, Molina, and Aaron, what did you think of that? Yeah, I think it was, uh, it was right before it started. It was a, it was a mish mismatch, wasn't it? it? Was you know, I really didn't yeah. understand the purpose of that fight, to be mm. honest. And Molina's coming overweight as well, you know. He's probably realised he's not going to win, so he's probably yeah. trying to get some kind of, kind of advantage. Mm. It's got a beat down, didn't it, for yeah, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It went just the way I expected yeah. it to. Yeah. It went just the way, you yeah, know. Yeah, if you describe it in one word, what would it be? Beat down. Beat down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that's a unanimous, they should change that, not unanimous decision. Yeah. Beat down. Beat you know, down, as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, I, I, I have to be honest, I'm excited um, and I'm going to go off on a tangent here, but I'm really excited for 2017 and boxing. There's a lot of criticism, there's a lot of stick saying people don't face each other. And I know Molina wasn't the greatest opposition for Crawford, but I do think next year he's got a big um, Aaron Wall, maybe either um, match him up with somebody big internally or hopefully try and work alongside the PBC ranks and get him in some entertaining <laughs> fights, you know. You look at Broner, that would be a very entertaining oh. fight that everybody would watch and tune in for. Um, and there's others. And just going back to you in terms of the 154 division, again, 154, even 160, stacked divisions oh with yeah. quality opponents all throughout the top 10 in my opinion. I've read so somewhere that someone's trying to put together a Ricky Burns Crawford unification fight. Really? Yeah. Wow. wow. Pretty sure I've heard it somewhere. Like, 140, both 140. Well, the best I can say for Burns is it'll be a payday. It's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Best I can say for him because he ain't winning that fight. He's not. Uh, first time round. No. So exactly. I what changes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like to be honest, like he, he was lucky to hold that belt when Crawford took it off him. I think he lost that fight to Beltran as well. Mm. You know, that was mm. a that, that was, was a home cooking. Draw, man. Yeah. That, was, that was disgusting. Yeah, that was just man. So yeah. um, so no, so that was a uh, that was one of the interesting fights. So. Just going back to something you said there, Nam, and going back to uh, Klitschko about age, the guy that we called the executioner, the alien, Bernard oh Hopkins, yeah. is fighting this weekend mm. um, against the challenger, Joe Smith Jr. Mm. I don't know if any of you guys saw the fight against Ronfaro where he actually knocked Ronfaro out. Yeah, um, very I've seen it. He, he looked like a powerful guy. Yeah, um, very powerful. What's your thoughts going into this fight knowing that Hopkins has said this is his farewell? Mm. Um... 
bizarre. I think he should beat Smith. Yeah. Because I don't think Smith has enough tricks in his cupboard mm. to beat him. He hasn't got the amateur pedigree of what Kovalev had. Yeah. You know, um, and Kovalev was very well prepared for Hopkins. Didn't hit him a lot to the head. Yeah. Smith obviously is going to try and take that template. Mm. He's going to try and slow the jab, jab the jab to the shoulder, jab to the body, bring the right hand over the top. Mm. Um, but I just don't think he's that clever. He doesn't come across. Yeah, yeah, he's an in your face. Yeah. You know, and from far you could clearly see it's a funny thing. From far as you could see, he believed the hype about himself. Yep. He's just his attitude, his whole attitude yeah. from when he got in the ring. It's like, oh, you know, you're just a bit, you're just a bit part in my one my of the Smith. He probably thought he's one of the Smith brothers, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so people in America thought he was one of the Smith brothers. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah, so I was one of the American English Smith brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, like um, so Hopkins, easy win. Uh, I wouldn't say easy. Um, Comfortable, comfortable. I say comfortable, yeah. Yeah, you know. I'll probably go for that as well. Yeah. I mean, like a glorious ending to kind of like what yeah. a thirty-one year career. I mean, this guy's only fifty-one. That's amazing. I mean, you think about it, right? I'm just like a freak of nature, just like Klitschko. Yeah, yes. you know. I mean, that's I, why he I calls mean, himself the alien. Yeah, you know? man. I'm mean, like, w- when do you ever think you're ever gonna see a guy? Only three years ago, a few years mm. ago, man, he was still a world champion. Mm. Right? We're never gonna see that. Never gonna no, see that. You know, like true, I, I remember when. Um, George Foreman when he won the heavyweight title mm, again in Nakamura. Yeah. I mean, that's quite. Yeah. I want to see man. It's quite an emotional film, man. I don't yeah. know why, man, because he's losing that fight. Yeah. You know, he's just Bomb. losing that fight, and then yeah. twelve man, bam. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's those rare moments in history. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and totally that, that's agree. what Hopkins is. You know, yeah. it's one of these rare things that's happened in history mm. that you don't know when you're gonna see that again. So yeah. I mean, like, you know, I just want to, you know, hope the guy just uh, has a ha- happy, happy life after yeah. boxing, man. Yeah. Yeah. I and um, so we've got obviously Povetkin uh, versus Stavrin. Uh, mm-hmm. They're fighting this weekend in Russia. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I think if Stavrin doesn't get the knockout, I don't see how he wins that fight. Yeah, um, because tough to go, yeah. it's going to be very tough, very, very mm. tough to, to get the, de- uh, get the decision. Mm. Well, he, said that, he said that they are going there for the knockout. Yeah. You know? I think it's almost as tough as going to Monaco, though, James. Mm. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> mm. I mean, so yeah. what do you guys think about that fight? You looking forward to it? Because it does I add a bit of spice to, it, yeah. to the heavyweight division. Yeah. You know, if are they, what channel are they showing it on? Is it um, Box Nation or...? Yeah, I think it yeah it should be Box Nation. I need to double check, mm. but I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but mm. it should be Box Nation. But yeah, we'll we'll definitely try and get a link and send that mm. across to you as well. If yeah, we can. please. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, I wish Severn would win. Yeah. He would. Mm. Yeah. Give you something that you fight. So I'm gonna go with it. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. Yeah. If you look at his resume. Over the, over the last few years, he looked who he's fought and knocked out. Mm. Knocked out some good fights. He's always yeah. saving good company. Exactly. So this, um, should he knock out Severn, this yeah. would be a massive statement in what I mean. who fights who. Exactly. You know. Shakes up that and you know what? I'll be honest with you, right? Compared to that, they always talk about who they want to fight. I don't hear none of them man mentioning um, Povetkin. Yeah. None of them. Yeah, have you seen? Know. So have you seen Povetkin's done this trailer um, for Deontay Wilder? Yeah. I say three for Deontay Wilder, yeah. but he's got somebody in his figure. He's this Wilder mask and mm. the yeah. cloak, and he's running in the woods, and yeah. then he kind of faces him, and he says, "I think it translates to our time is not yet. We will meet soon." Yeah, and it's I quite theatrical, I and like and it's exactly. I I really like that, and you're right. He's not. He doesn't get talked about a lot. Is it the fear? Mm. Um, Maybe, but you know that he's going to be a tough challenge for, for anybody that, that fate decides yeah. to face him. And the people that keep so lost, man, this guy's got a solid record. Oh, mm. yeah, I think. Right. I mean, I watched when he knocked out Mikey Garcia. That is his only loss, right? Yeah. yeah. That's his only loss. And yeah. the way he stepped around Mikey Garcia to nail him, you know, was... was um, and the other thing as well, this guy's got big backing as well in Russia, yeah. man. So what, yeah. I think he ain't got to leave Russia. I think yeah. what happens basically is when they fight negotiations, it always goes to first bid. And once yeah, it goes boom. to first bid, these guys are booked. Yeah. They just that's how dollars, they win. Man. Well, that's I mean, what happened like, with Deontay. Deontay yeah, exactly. was going to have to go there, wasn't he? Exactly. You know, so that's what it is. You know, mm. that's what, I think that's probably one of the reasons why they want to fight him. Because mm. they know when it comes to money, yeah, they, they get will outfit them. When you come into Russia, mate, yeah. lose your belt. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, there you go. Yeah, I mean, you saw it. I know we didn't get a chance to talk about it um, previously, but you had Richard Comey go over there and get yeah. a decision that was mm. clearly not in his favour. Yeah. So, you know, that evil mm. drug there. A um, couple of interesting things this weekend. I don't know if you noticed, um, uh, Yuri Scambo is fighting in France this weekend um, mm. against an opponent that seems to have changed twice. So first it was um, Dialba, um, and now it seems to be Klatsen, a South African, um, and it's for the vacant belt. So 
that could be interesting because I think, think about, um, it is the. Give me one second. Quite a sad actually, man. That guy's not been managed well at all. Not at all. Is no. it, what is it with Cuban boxers though? Well, a lunatic though. Yeah. A lunatic. I think he went with um, Fifty Cent, did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of just about <laughs> <up> his career, <laughs> man. Yeah, there's a bit. There was a trend there because who else was with Fifty? Wasn't Stevenson with? Uh, 50 Cent as well at a time. Mm. So there's quite a few guys. But yeah, he's a, so they're fighting for a vac- vacant title. Um, um, so I'm trying to bring it up now. And uh, yeah, it's in it's in the Rand- it's in St. Denis, which is like the ghetto of France, if you guys are familiar with France. Oh, it's, really? a, it's a really strange... I, I saw that. It came up on my list and I thought, <laughs> what is going on here? Um, so yeah, so I mean, it could be interesting um, if to see if he gets back into the mix of things. Um, but yeah, no, it should, it should be there. Um and then we've also got, um, I mean, the Katie Taylor fight. What did you guys think about about that? Um, so it's a WBA, uh, sorry, as well. WBA International. Oh, oh it's yeah, International. international okay. yeah. um, she's a really good fighter. Yeah. <laughs> she's a really good fighter. I mean, she was my second, she was my third best fighter in 2012 Olympics yeah. behind Errol Spence Jr. Yeah. and um, Rodney Yeah. Um, I'm at the Wembley mm-hmm. fight, yeah. and I mean, you know who you could see how she good she was. I mean, the yeah. combinations, the yeah. speed, the angle yeah. she would throw them at. Yeah. She was just on her. Um, yeah. I was happy that she did this with Swipe because mm-hmm. she cleared one. Um, like that experience mm-hmm. to get some some aggression she made. So, um, so that was perfect. Um, so we've all online. Um, so we're just gonna take last call. Uh, it's four seven eight. Um, and then kind of four seven eight. Um, uh, good evening, chaps. Uh, uh, chaps. Hi, I've got you all week. Um, but yeah, we'll see you quick. I've got a great show I've been about and uh, on the way back, been listening to it. I've always it dropped some real knowledge tonight. Thank you. So, uh, Appreciate I'm it. really happy. But also, I went through the, the fight. I went to Manchester this oh, weekend. Oh, great, uh, great experience. Shoulder, he's got smaller sh- go shoulder pads thing going on when he's dressing yeah. down yeah. there. <laughs> so he looks a bit oh, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. He's um, an absolute unit. I mean, he's a thing. Yeah. After the fight, I mean, just his arm neck is going. His arms look absolutely massive. Yeah. 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 But that's what I got anyway. We'll have a night on our Cheers. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Jeff. Speak soon. Cheers. No, um, that was great. And that's good. Some more callers just uh, giving some mm. news to the fight. So, so that's been it. That's it for this week's fo- folks. So. Follow us on uh, Raps on TV at from my Instagram. Hello, Gary, do you want to quickly give out your Twitter hand? Yeah, Gary Logan 68. Gary Logan, and anything you say first? No, thank you for this video, guys. Uh, hope you keep going. Yeah, very nice. So if you mind, uh, please keep following us, liking, sharing. And um, we're trying to grow this brand of Raps on TV. Wraps up. Thank you.